Hello, this is a, a short video message with regards to GCSE physical education that your sons and daughters might be interested in pursuing when they choose their year 10 options. I'm Mr. Boothman, I'm head of GCSE PE and obviously in charge of, of running the course, uh, but it could be any of my colleagues who will be uh, teaching your sons and daughters if they choose GCSE PE for, for, the, for the next academic year. So with our course, GCC Physical Education, there's four components to the course. These are fitness and body systems, health and performance, practical performance, and a personal exercise program. Two of these components are theory-based learning, and the other two are practical-based uh, components. So I wanted to go into a little bit of detail about each of the, of the units. So our unit one activity is fitness and body systems. So this is uh, paper one, and there are four units of study, applied anatomy, movement analysis, physical training, and the use of data. Anatomy and physiology is really to do with the body system. So we learn about the skeletal system. Uh, we learn about the, the muscles of the body. We then move on to work on the cardiovascular system, which is heart, blood, and blood vessels. And we then move on to the respiratory system. And all of these body systems have an impact on us as as people with regards to our health and well-being and also our ability to cope with the demands of our environment so our fitness um, and health well-being so so we cover those four body systems in that particular unit of work we then in paper one move on to a movement analysis movement analysis is really to do with what's called biomechanics so it's biology the mechanics of the human body so uh, we look at lever systems in the body we look at the, the way that our bodies and our muscles and our bones work together to create movements, just as um, lever systems in the real world would, would be working. Uh, we then look at how our bodies move through different planes and axes of movement. Um, and again, this is to do with uh, the mechanics of our bodies and, and how we rotate and turn. Um, our third topic on paper one is physical training which is our biggest topic so physical training is linked to uh, physical fitness and well-being so we look at the 11 components of fitness we then look at how you might test those components of fitness we look at ways in which you might train our ability in these 11 areas we look at the rules that we follow to to make sure that fitness gains can occur which are called the principles of training um, we look at how physical training impacts on our body system, so linking that back to the topic number one, which is anatomy and physiology. Um, and then finally, with physical training, we go on to injury prevention, injuries associated with the sport. We then look at um, how recreational drugs impact on us as sports people, and also how performance enhancing drugs are linked to it. So that's all of paper one. Paper two. Um, is all about health and performance. And these are the four topics, health, fitness and well-being, psychology and sport, sociocultural influences and use of data. Health, fitness and well-being is linked to health. So it's physical health, emotional health and social health. Um, and what defines those three things? We look at our lifestyle choices, and, uh, the impacts that we would have of leading a sedentary lifestyle. Uh, we then link all of this into diet and nutrition and how what we eat and what we consume will impact on our health and well-being. Um, topic two in um, um, paper two is psychology and sport. So it's to do with the brain and our mind and uh, how we how we accomplish tasks due to our kind of like thought processes. We look at how we would use goals to motivate, how we classify skills, the practice regimes that we put in place. How we can be guided, the kinds of feedback we get from our performances and mental rehearsal. Our third and final unit of work on this paper is social cultural influences. Participation in sport due to the following influences. So how gender, age, social status, ethnicity and disability will impact on us. We then look at commercialization in sport. So how we look at the, the way that the media and key people and advertising uh, will impact on us as sports people um, and how commercialization will shape the, 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 the way that sport and sport continues to, to develop and grow in different areas. For example, the growth of women's rugby due to commercialization is something that we'll look at. Um, 
social cultural influence, we also look at sporting behaviour, sportsmanship and gamesmanship. So being good sportsmen and obviously trying to, to adhere to the rules of the game and in gamesmanship, which is all about how we might try and manipulate a game situation to our own benefit by bending the rules. So we look at those two things. What I haven't covered is the use of data. And in both papers, you can expect to, to be assessed and challenged on the ability to look at data associated with those six units of work and how we would then use that data to answer questions. The practical side of things is, uh, is a little bit more straightforward in that you are going to be covering three teams, three sports, one of which has to be a team sport, one and an individual sport from either of the, the lists that are displayed on the screen. We have got a um, finite choice of sports. You can't do anything that's not on these lists. Uh, and the third sport is an additional one from either list. Now, there'll be things on there that you may look at and you think, well, I don't have access to those things at Millthorpe School. We do allow students to, to, to choose sports that they might not be able to access in school, but what they're doing outside of school. For example, somebody might snowboard or ski, somebody might be into horse riding, somebody might be able to um, access some trampolining, some gymnastics outside of school. So that's where we are with practical performance. The exercise programme is something that we cover in year 11, and that is to plan, carry out, monitor and evaluate our ability to, to exercise. Now the assessments in PE, in GCCPE, we've got two theory-based exams, paper one, one hour 45, paper two, one hour 15. Both have multiple choice short answer and long answer questions. The assessment in practical is based on like a, a, a mark scheme. So there's 10 marks available for skills in isolation and 25 marks for those for our ability to use those skills in competitive situations. This is an example of a mark scheme that we might use. And this is for association football. Of the three sports that you do, there's 35 marks available given as a total score of 105. These are awarded by a PE teacher and moderated through an external body. And the exercise program is marked by us, sports service teachers and external moderator will then validate our marks. Careers in sport associated with, with GCCPE, people who choose our subject will, will look potentially to go into these, these areas uh, in their careers. The final thoughts is that students do well in our subject, 80% of students achieve a great GCC grade four or above. That's based on our last two years worth of data. We also allow our GCC students to wear a specific GCC top for all their lessons. Whilst that isn't a, a reason to, to choose our subject, it's certainly something that we take pride in as GCC uh, advocates. I hope uh, everything that I've kind of shared with you has been of use to you. Um, and I will be available to answer any questions that you may have you wanted to email me or contact me at school, then I'll be happy to, to assist and give you any more details that you require. Hope that's been useful. Uh, all the very best.